he got all these aunties and uncles and he got a set of grandparents and <laughs> just all of those things that we love on all of the babies. Amen. So to you, my brothers and sisters in Christ, we're going to jump into it because I am so excited about discovering the spiritual gifts. Amen. You need the Holy Ghost. You need the Holy Ghost. And as I begin to dive into this lesson and think about some of these spiritual gifts and how it can feel like a burden unless you have the Holy Ghost to impart wisdom and guide you through it. Amen. Um, you all should have the um, e-club. So I'm hoping if you don't have the e-club, please check your emails really quickly um, for the e-club. So you have this lesson there as well. Um, we will put the link to the e-club if you're not already subscribed. So let's jump into it. Let's be interactive because this is for everybody. This is absolutely for all of those of us who are in ministry, discovering and developing your spiritual gifts. And we're going to walk through the Bible. What is a spiritual gift? It's not going to be Sister Lenita's definition of a spiritual gift. Amen. A spiritual gift is a special attribute given by the spirit to every member of the body of Christ, according to God's grace for the edification of the body and the exaltation of Christ. Key words, amen, for the exaltation of Christ. This isn't so missionary Lenita looks good. This isn't so somebody can call my name, amen. This isn't for any of that. It is to exalt the name of Jesus Christ, amen. What is meant by the body of Christ? So again, we're talking about solid steps for saints. I've been in this thing, not, I hear people say, I've been in this thing a long time. I haven't been. I've just discovered my spiritual gifts and that they had a name, amen, since I've been at Solid Rock. And so we're on to Ephesians 1. Um, if you all could get Ephesians 1, um, verses 20 through 23. And I will read um, in the Amplified Version. Y'all know I love the Amplified Version. And then if I can get someone that can get Colossians 1, 15 through 18, we're going to talk about what is meant by the body of Christ. Amen. So if I go to Ephesians 1 and start at verse 20, again, I need someone to get um, Colossians uh, chapter 1, verse 15 through 18. Amen. So Ephesians 1 um, verse 20, let's kick it off, which he produced in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his own right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion, whether angelic or human, and far above every name that is named, above every title that can be conferred. So above missionary, above elder, pastor, bishop, apostle, deacon, whatever it is, amen? above every title that can be conferred, not only in this age and the world, but also in the one to come. Verse 22, and he put all things in every realm and subjection under Christ's feet. He put all things in every realm. Y'all hear a pastor talking about these zodiac signs, these rocks and sage, you know, people say, oh, thank to the universe. Amen. Every realm. He is the name above every realm, amen, and subjection under Christ's feet and appointed him as supreme and authoritative, head over all things in the church, head over all things in the church, amen, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills and completes all things in all believers, amen. Did y'all hear that? the fullness of him who fills and completes all things and all believers. Go ahead and type in the chat. He fills and completes all things in me. He fills and completes all things in me. Amen. All things. So when we're looking to people to fill voice that only God can fill, when we get angry at people because they don't give us everything that we give them, this is the word. We're talking about discovering and developing your spiritual gifts. Amen. Yours. Jesus Christ fills and completes all 
things in me. Amen. All things. So when you're looking for your spiritual gifts, stop looking to other people for those gifts. Amen. You look in Jesus Christ for those gifts. Now we do have leaders. Amen. I'm looking at, you know, Paul writing, we're going to get to Romans um, 12 in a little while, but I'm looking at Paul. He was a leader. Amen. And I read a version of the Bible. Y'all know my um, John Maxwell. You know, I love this John Maxwell Bible. I just read the, the title here and it says leaders are brokers of gifts. Amen. So it is those leaders, those who've been in it, those who've discovered their gifts, your pastor, your first lady, amen, those who reign over you, amen, that can help you to understand what are the gifts that you have, amen. Does someone have Colossians 1, 15 through 18, amen? What is meant by the body of Christ? Missionary Smith? Yes, uh, Colossians 1, 15. It says, who is, who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every create, creature? For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thr thrones, thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. And he is before all things, and by him all things consist. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence. I can't pronounce that word. Preeminence. Pre preeminence. Yeah, preeminence. Amen. 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 Are y'all getting that? What is meant by the body of Christ? What are you hearing? Come on, let me know. What is meant by the body of Christ? What are you hearing? You can unmute or type in the chat. God is everything. Amen. God is everything. I hear, is that Brother Makai? Yeah, yes. Uh, when you say he, I'm saying, this is a this is talking about Jesus? Jesus Christ. Okay, I was, I was going to make Amen. The body of Christ. Anyone else? It, it is the ecclesia. It's the called out body of Christ. The called out ones. The called out body of Christ. Amen. Amen. So again, these are lessons to study. Amen. And I, I just love the way this flows. I was looking at this and I wouldn't change anything. I love the way it flows because it goes to the basic understanding, right? The body of Christ, the called out ones. Amen. You're hearing in both Ephesians and Colossians, everything, right? Every knee shall bow to the name of Jesus. Everything that's everything is under him. So the called out ones, we're going to talk a little bit more about what that means. Amen. What percentage of the people that God saves, does he give spiritual gifts? I know I hear that all the time. I don't have no gift. I'm just a lay member. Being a lay member is a gift. <laughs> Amen. I see that all the time. People come and they just sit. I just want to come hear the word. I don't want to do all that. I don't, I don't have gifts. I don't have, let's understand what it is that you do have. Amen. What percentage of the people that God saves, does he give spiritual gifts? Amen. We're journeying through the Bible. It is Bible study. Amen. First Peter 4.10. Anyone have that? First Peter 4.10. Come on, there's 28 devices online, amen? As every man have received the gift, even so minister the same one to another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. Mm, that was good, right in the, what did it say? Less, who, just one man? Uh, every man. Every, amen. I heard the word every man. How many of you know that's every man, every woman, every child? That's me too. Amen. 
Is that what that is? Is that that's me too? Amen. Um, oh, I love that missionary, Burnett. Uh, we don't have no bench warmers. Amen. What about First Corinthians twelve and seven? We're talking about who have who has spiritual gifts of those people that God saved. Amen. First Corinthians twelve and seven. I love this. I have, who is that with their hands raised? Sister Sybil? Yes, um, the Lord has given each and every one of us a spiritual gift. Now, whether you choose to acknowledge it or use it, that's up to, uh, to the individual. Our, each person's gift is very important to the body of Christ. There's no big gift, little gift. Amen, amen. Sister Maisha? Oh, I was raising my hand to read. Okay, come on, let's read. Oh, okay. First uh, Corinthians 12 and 7, but the manifestation of the spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. Mm, it's given to each one for what? The profit of all. The profit of all is given to each one for the profit of all. Amen. Missionary Burnett, is your hand up? Yes. Yeah, I just wanted to go back to the um about who he gives gifts to. And and in Ephesians 4 and 11, he says, and he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and some teachers. And that word I wanted to um um focus in on is teachers, because it's like I I have I don't consider myself a teacher, you know, and I don't consider that to be my gift. But then I thought about when it says train up a child in the way that he should go. So we also meant to, to, to teach our children what we have learned and share that information with them. So in some ways, I am a teacher and I am called to teach and to share the information. So I gotta stop saying what I'm not, that I'm not a teacher because I may not be a teacher as everyone else is, but I am called to teach and share information. Amen. Amen. Absolutely, a Holy Ghost gave you that. <laughs> That's why we need the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Anyone else have your hand up before we move forward? So we know now what is meant by the body of Christ. Amen. We know what percentage. So we know all of us that God saved have spiritual gifts. Amen. Pastor. Yeah, I, I, I was going exactly where brother, brother uh, Deacon Burnett is because he's so right. Glory to God. And if you read that, it goes on. And this is one of the fivefold, the scriptures that we use for the fivefold ministry, but talks about he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers for the equipping of the saints of the work, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying, the building up, the nourishing of the body of Christ. Till we come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God to a mature man or woman to the measure and stature of the fullness of Christ. So it's all about all of us doing our work. Some might have the gift of it, but many times God will use you in that gift. That's what Brother Burnett was saying. He'll use you in that area, even though that might not be your specific gift. He'll use you because he can anoint you for a particular season to carry out a particular uh, assignment. Amen. Amen. I absolutely believe that wholeheartedly. And I know that as we get down here to spiritual gifts, I know there's some of you online that has spiritual gifts. Amen. And you can also share your experience and how the Holy Ghost help you find that, how the Holy Ghost help you identify what your spiritual gifts are. But I want to start with um, Romans 12. So if you all could get Romans 12, everybody get Romans 12 in your Bible. Um, the Burnett's again, your hand are up. Yes. Um, I never really knew exactly what my gift was as far as, well, I have several gifts, but I didn't know the names particularly. I mean, I knew I was part of, you know, the guy, Lord gave me gifts for the music. 
But um, other than that, I didn't know that there was, it was a gift in the Bible that's, you know, specifically named, you know, the gifts of helps. I never knew that because I love to help everywhere, anywhere, anybody as much as I can. And I know that's my gift, the gifts of help. Now I know the name of it. Amen. Amen. Sister Beverly. First, giving honor to God, to our pastor, first lady, to all the saints. Um, I just wanted to read, um, I was, I had um, the verse in the Amplified Version, and I just found that, um, just wanted to share this. Uh, it says, but to each one is given the manifestation of the spirit, the spiritual illumination and the enabling of the Holy Spirit for the common good. And that just kind of just kind of rested with me that, you know, um, you know, when you're talking about the spiritual gifts and things, the biggest gift that we have is the Holy Spirit, you know, which leads us and guides us. So I just I, that just kind of touched my spirit. And I just wanted to share that with you. Thank you. Amen. Amen. And so we're going down to Romans 12 so we can talk a little bit more about what Sister Beverly just said. Amen. Romans 12. Um, we're going to go Romans 12, and we're going to actually journey through um, Romans. I want to stay in Romans for a little bit because I think this uh, Romans 12 um, goes through 1 through 9. Um, I think that this is going to help us identify. If you have not already identified the spiritual gifts that you hold, this will help us do that. Amen. And again, I'll, some of you online may want to expound as we go through these, because I know that there are some of us who knows the gifts that we have. Amen. So Romans 12, um, 1 um, through 4. Can I get someone to read 1 through 4? And then I'll come back for someone to start at verse 6. I'm sorry, verse 5. So 1 through 4, Missionary Smith. Romans 12, 1 through 4. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye might prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Um, how far did you want me to go? Six? Four. Four. Okay. For I say, through the grace given unto me, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly according to God, according, according as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. For as we have many members in one body, and all members have not the same office. Amen. Many members in one body. So one thing I want you to write down and think about is why do you think it was important for Paul to go through this and tell us that we present our bodies as a living sacrifice before he gets into the spiritual gifts? That caught my eye. Why bring my body under subjection before going into those spiritual gifts. Amen. Think about that. Why is that so important? Amen. Amen. Um, Pastor put helps 1 Corinthians 12 and 28. Amen. There's so much in here that can help you. I think for one, that's why you need to present your body as a living sacrifice. That's why you need to be filled. Amen. So that you can understand that everything you need is in God's word. Amen. If you want to figure out what is it that I'm good at, you you already know what you're good at, but it's going to take the Holy Ghost to bring that out. Um, I saw um, whose hand is up to read from verse five and verse six. Is that the Burnett? Yes. Okay. Verse five and six. So we being many are one body in Christ, and every one members one of another, having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, whether prophecy, prophecy, 
let us prophesy according to the proportion of faith. Amen. So I wanted to stop at that gift. Verse six, amen. First of all, this is about all of us being connected as one. All of us sharing the characteristics of Christ. Amen. Um, I heard um, Sister Sybil say there's no big U's and little I's or big I's and little U's. Amen. Since we have gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, each of us is to use them accordingly. If someone has the gift of prophecy, let him speak a new message from God to his people in proportion to the faith possessed. That's the Amplified. Amen. The gift of prophecy looks like this. As you've grown up as a child, as an adult, as you've grown up, you've been able to identify things. You've been able to see things. You've been able to see spirits. You've been able to tell people things. But a lot of times we keep it to ourselves because we don't know how to use it. And oftentimes you'll use that gift of prophecy with discernment and people will shut you out because it's not something that they wanted to hear. If your life looks like someone always saying, you always run in your mouth <laughs> or you don't know nothing, amen? You get pushed back because oftentimes people reject that kind of truth. And so you've probably shut it off, amen? For because of that kind of rejection. Amen. Sister Smothers says, holy and acceptable if we present ourselves without surrender ourselves to God. Amen. It is important to seek the baptism of the Holy Ghost as you operate in these gifts. Amen. That gift of prophecy is real as you have that measure of faith. Amen. You have to hear God. You have to want God to be glorified more than you want to be a prophet. Amen. Does that make sense, y'all? As we continue, amen. I'm hoping that makes a little bit of sense. Amen. Y'all can talk back to me as we go. Um, as we move on from verse six, can someone read verse seven and eight for me, please? We're still down here. And why do we need to know about the spiritual gifts? Amen. Amen. I, I can read. When you said verse seven through eight. Yes. It says, or minister, let us wait on our ministering. Or he that teaches on teaching. Or he that exalted on exaltation. He that giveth, let him do it with simplicity. He that ruleth with diligence, he that showeth mercy with cheerfulness. Amen. Go down to the nine. Okay. Amen. Amen. So there's so much in here, but I just want to talk through these gifts and then we'll go through these questions here. Amen. So verse seven talks about service. Anybody got the gift of ministry? Amen. You got the gift of serving others. You got the gift of being helpful. Amen. The gift of service. Amen. That might look a little like hospitality. Amen. That might be the, the party planner, the one that everyone looks to. Amen. To make sure that the event goes off without a, a hit. Yesterday, we were at the park. Um, Sister Beverly, amen. She certainly has that gift of service, the gift of hospitality, amen. She, she just sees people. She sees the need before the need arises. She gets up, she's getting napkins, she's getting cakes, she's getting forks. She's just noticing, amen. Someone sat down with a plate without a fork and a napkin and she noticed they didn't have it. They didn't even notice they didn't have it, <laughs> amen. So that's what this gift of service might look like. Amen. That gift of teaching. Some people may just have a gift of teaching things that are difficult to learn, but you help them to grasp it. Amen. That may look like your career in early childhood education, learning and development. Amen. You may just have that gift to make things palatable. Amen. That's what that looks like. So when you are looking in the Bible about these gifts, that's how you identify those things. You come to Bible study so that those around you with that gift can see that. Amen. Or he who encourages in the act of encouragement. 
Amen. Some people, I know, I know Sister Smothers got the gift of encouragement. Amen. Because sometimes I get those texts and I, I don't care when it comes. It's always at the right time. Amen. Just those gift of words and encouragement. Uh, missionary BFF. Amen. The ivory. I mean, just make you feel good about yourself. Amen. That is the gift of encouragement. And I'm sure that took time to develop. Amen. But knowing that it was there, amen, is something that is there, but how do you use it? Amen. I know a lot of us have the gifts of encouragement. We have the gift of service. I see all the time on social media in those areas where it's like, I'm going to stop being a good person. I'm going to stop giving everybody everything. Here I am. And nobody's came to see about me. Yes, you have that ministry, but it may not come as easy to everybody else. Amen. Pastor, I saw your hand up. Yeah, I was I was just thinking about that encouragement because it is so powerful and so necessary. And really, that word encouragement really speaks to the same thing that missionary uh, Burnett was talking about. It's the word ecclesia, and it speaks to one called alongside to help your helper, a supporter, a lifter. Uh, and that's what that really is. And some people just have, uh, yes, it could be, come on, you can do it, all of that. But that all really speaks to coming alongside to be a blessing, to be a support, to be a strength to somebody else. Yeah. Amen. Absolutely. A gift well needed. Amen. I mean, there's so many others that have those gifts, but because they don't have the knowledge yet to hone in on those gifts or to ask for wisdom to use those gifts instead of drawing them back out of the body and saying, I'm just not going to do it. I've been hurt this many times. I'm just not going to do it. Ask God for wisdom on how to use them, how to control the gifts that you have. Amen. And sometimes the, all the gifts that you have, especially in the body of Christ, they can be thankless jobs. Amen. We see Sister Stevenson week after week having to curtail her hours because there's not help there for her, but it doesn't stop her from getting up and doing it. It doesn't stop her passion from wanting to serve the community. It doesn't stop her passion from seeing people without food and knowing they need help. Amen. That gift. Amen. Honing in on the Holy Spirit for that. Amen. And that is encouragement. And then he who gives with generosity, he who leads with gentle, with diligence, he who shows mercy and caring. I saw a hand and we're going to talk about the gift of mercy. Amen. That's something that I'm learning. Amen. Um, whose hand was that? Was that the Burnett's? Was that you? Yes, ma'am. Yes, I just when you talk about the gifts of encouragement, I just like to um mention Deacon Hooker because I first came to the church and I came back to the church and he was doing all this work around the church and cleaning up and and you know it was an encouragement to me, you know, and, and I look for it. I don't mind helping, but I especially don't mind helping people that are doing something. You know, I, 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 I like I don't mind helping missionary. I mean, um, Sister Stevenson, and 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 when um, we giving away that food on Saturdays and stuff, um, Minister Shandy and Elder um, Ivy, they they encourage me so much with how they just come in and help support to go pick up that food because it's not easy, and and, and Elder Ivy has. Um, back problems sometimes but just for him to show up is an encouragement to me to continue on and do so you know I, like i say I, I i'm encouraged by people that are working you know and I, I may need to um work on myself when i have attitude about considering people lazy but you know but <laughs> I, I, I i do i do i do kind of tend to 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 want to work with people that are actually doing something. Amen. We have Deacon to Burnett, those that are not doing nothing. Amen. Amen. Deacon Burnett, can I ask you, how long have you just seen that there was a need and wanted to help? How long have you been doing that? I believe that's just a gift that God has given to me. When I see a need, I just have. I, 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 like I was talking to pastor, I say, if I see a need, I just want to take care of it. I, I can't just, just stand back and not do anything. It's like, 
when hospitality yeah. put on something, no, nobody has to ask me to dump the garbage. I see yeah. the garbage is overflowing. I'm a, I'm gonna take it out and, and <laughs> replace the bag. Whatever needs to be done, and I'm, a, I'm gonna do it. You know, because I'm looking for opportunities to serve and make things easier on those that are, 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 are doing what they need to do, so that they don't have to stop doing the hospitality. You have to stop doing what they're doing in order to yes. take out the trash or do something because they already are busy doing something. So I, that's just the way I am. That Amen. sounds like a passion. Amen. <laughs> this is how we're something? recognizing our gifts. Yes. Yes. Um, I'm, I agree with my husband. I'm the same exact way. You know, whenever I see something that needs to be done, I just automatically do it. And like pastor says, it's, it's, it's um, easy to get a, uh, so something that's moving, it's easy to push or however he says that, or it's hard to get um, some a, a vehicle that's not moving. It's hard mm -hmm. to push it or something like that. But I remember one time a pastor came, I think um, they swapped uh, pulpits one year and um, he had a meeting with us after church and I was walking down the aisle. I just automatically picked up something off the floor and um he mentioned it afterwards. I wasn't even paying no attention. Didn't know nobody was watching me, but he mentioned it. He said, that sister right there, she just, people was passing by, whatever was on the floor, and she just picked it up. And that's how members or people should be, is whatever their hands find to do, they just do it. Just, you know, to help the church. And I wasn't even thinking about it. I just automatically did it. But that just made me know that people are watching whatever you're doing if you're doing nothing and watching that too <laughs> amen sister beverly i second deacon um burnett's emotion on this because there's so many people that just like you said walk across walk will step over something and then later on make a comment did you see that step? and i'm just it, and it's just it's it's disheartening i think and um i just you know, um, and like the pastor always say, many hands. Nobody's asking you to do all the work, but if every single person would do a little bit, just a little bit, it would just, things could just, it, it would make it so much easier. And it give us all time to do other things, you know? And um, our people, sometimes I feel like people just sit back and just, oh, well, I, I don't have to do that. I'm just going to sit and wait. You know, you see, yesterday, we're getting the picnic was over you know and i know the men usually do it so, but i start folding up the chair now pastor had to help me because i there was something wrong with one of them chairs it was an <laughs> evil chair but pastor laid hands and that chair came in submission and the rest of the chairs followed but it was just like other people were just like sitting around and stuff and it's just if everybody got up and just did their one if i picked up my chair and every person that got up out of their chair picked up their chair and folded the chair that would have been good. They would all been stacked and it was easier to load, you know, yeah. going around and just picking up garbage. You don't have to eat your garbage. You know, it's just like what um, uh, Missionary Burnett said, you know, the paper towels fell off the table, start rolling. I got up and got those. The, the plates start flying. Sister Lanita got up and got the, and there was people just sitting there like, oh, look at them plates fly. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> I'm done. I'm, I, Amen. I'm done. I'm done. But we are talking hey. about, you hey, know, baby. the spiritual gifts. Amen. Um, they will benefit you in your own personal life by making you healthier and more effective in serving others. We heard Deacon Burnett talk about that. They will benefit the entire church. We've heard everyone that just spoke talk about that. When you have gifts and you use them by your measure of faith. Amen. I saw a couple hands go up. Um, pastor, then Sister Smothers, then First Lady. I just want to say real quickly, one of the things that's important when we're ministering according to the faith that we have, glory to God, because many times people will get discouraged because uh, they're not being noticed or, or they get somebody who doesn't appreciate the service that they perform uh, or, you know, they, they're the, they, they look around and it looks like they're the only ones doing something. But when that thing is, is in you, glory to God, you'll keep doing it until somebody else gets encouraged by watching you do it. 
Glory to God. And that's how we have to do this. Based on the measure of faith that God has placed within us, we serve at whatever capacity, whatever God has called us to. If we prophesy, we prophesy according to the proportion of our faith where God has given us the ability and not prophesying above what God says or beyond when God tells us to. Glory to God. And it's important for us to do that, to recognize that the spirit of God will lead us and guide us well into all truth. And so uh, encouraging and lifting. That's what I'm saying. Don't be discouraged. Don't be discouraged. And don't be discouraged. And I know a lot of times we talk about you know, the things that discourage us or frustrate us, but it's most of the time because of our passion. And so we have to understand that the, the, we just read that God gives each one a measure. So your gift may not be someone else's gift. Yes. It gave me a little anxiety to see planes flying, but that's my OCD. That's, that's my thing, right? That's my gift. I, we can't expect or project who we are and the gifts that God gave us on others. Some may be sitting down ministering to others. Some may be sitting down encouraging others. So let's just be careful when we are seeing things, others not seeing things the way we do. Yes, it's frustrating because God gave you that gift and he gave you a passion for it. So ask God for wisdom on how to use it. And as pastor said, not be discouraged because others weren't given the same gift that you were given. Sister Smothers. I just wanted to say that, who gifts, there are many gifts and each and every one of us have those gifts instilled in us. It's just asking God to bring it out of us because I never thought that I would have the gift of just encouraging people without, you know, really, because I'm always wondering who's going to encourage me, but it encourages me to encourage others because the love of God is so deeply inside of me that I just love making people happy. I love hearing people say I was encouraged or acknowledging. I don't think I ever sent out a text that I don't get a response on. It's very rare that I don't get a response on. Like uh, every day I text a certain group of women. And then every Wednesday I text every woman's number I have in the church, I text them. And you know, that's, that's not a ministry that pastor told me to do or somebody else. It's just something that I did. And well, I know that that was what God gave me to do. When you know what God gives you to do, you have to be able to do it. You can't deny it. You can't sit on it. You can if you want to, but that's going to be your detriment because God is so good. When you do those things, you just don't know how blessed you are. You know, I wake up in the morning and say, oh, I got to I got to do my greetings before I do anything else. Before I do this, before I do that, don't let me get caught up. And I just believe that all of us have certain gifts, but my gift, when I look at the gifts that I have, my most important gift to me is being a servant of God, to do whatever it is God lays before me to do. And to me, that gives me great pleasure, cleaning up, not cleaning up, doing this, doing that, whatever God lays on my heart. And you know, the gift of prophecy, knowing when somebody's hurting, sometimes we can look at people and know they hurt and just say, she didn't look too happy today. Besides going over there and giving her a big gigantic hug and saying, I love you. You don't have to ask them what's wrong. Just I love you is enough. So those are the gifts, those are some of the gifts that I recognize and see in everybody in our church. That's why I say everybody got gifts. You mm -hmm. just have to ask God to open up your heart to use your gifts. Thank Amen. you. Amen. Amen. First lady. All right. Amen. 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 I can truly say that I have enjoyed everything I have heard. And I know that it's also true, but y'all ain't gonna like me. You don't need no gift for this. When you walk in the church and you see something on the floor, if it ain't quite right, fix it. You don't need no gift for it. That's God's house. You know, it's God's house. I honor God's house. We as a group, if we all come together and and help it get done, it will be done. So if you see something that's not quite right or not in the area, or you may say, you know what, maybe I'll just do whatever I need, you know, just because it's God's house and I reverence God's house. And, and it's like when I come in, I want to see God's house look good for others. Amen. That's just like when you walk in your own house, you want your own 
I don't know about all of y'all, but I want my house to look good. I want it to be straight. I want everything. I want to, if I see a table not quite right, I'm going to wipe it down. Amen. And it won't hurt us to do that because it's God's house and it all belongs to us. We all pay tithes, right? Yep, we all pay tithes. I believe that. We all get offerings, right? Yep, we all do that. So we want to take care of what God has blessed us with. Amen. So I'm just encouraging you all, please. I mean, Pastor Love, Noah, I can say I love this so much. I encourage my pastor to get a housekeeper to come in. So <laughs> once a month, we pay somebody to come in to help us keep the house clean. So I'm encouraging all of you, which I know like Sister Burnett, she's real good at it. And I know that Sister Edmondson, she's real good at it. But we all should take care of God's house. And I'm going to shut up on that note because I love you all. But please, let's make the church house look like your house. I don't know how your house looks, but we want to make the church house good for God. Amen. God bless you all. Amen. And I'm done. Amen. Bless you, First Lady. We have one more hand and then we'll move on to our lesson. Elder Mitchell. Yes, I'm here. Um, I just wanted to agree with First Lady. Um, first natural, then spiritual. You don't need a gift to pick up. You know, um, I have taught my children that it's about initiative. And they said, well, mama, what's that? It's about seeing something that needs to be done and doing it without somebody having to tell you to do it. You see it there, do it. It helps the whole circle. It helps the whole unit. You know, if, 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 even if it's not your turn, and this is what I taught my children, even if it's not your turn to wash the dishes, if you're here and maybe the other person isn't and it needs to be done, just do it. It's not going to hurt nothing. You know, just have initiative. Doing something that needs to be done without somebody having to tell you to do it plain and simple. Amen. Amen. So we're talking about benefiting the entire church. Amen. Um, and so we want to continue to be able to identify through these conversations, our spiritual gifts, right? And um, I'll finish out the Romans and then we'll talk a little bit about um, suggestions to discover your gifts, right? I think we've been talking about that along the way. Amen. Um, I see some, um, you know, amens in the chat. I see Missionary Burnett says we have to cultivate our gifts as well. Absolutely. Pastor says discernment. Discernment is so important. Amen. That's why you need to seek the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And you need to be obedient enough to follow Amen. The junction of the Holy Ghost. Amen. At the end of this, uh, where we'll read uh, Romans, I'm at verse eight right now in Romans chapter 12. And it says, um, he who shows mercy and caring for others um, with cheerfulness. Amen. So we want to talk a little bit about the gift of mercy, because I think in the corporate world and in psychology, we call this the empath. Amen. Mercy is something different. Amen. And so when you have the gift of mercy, this is where you feel what other feel. You might be the one that's more forgiving than others. Amen. And oftentimes you'll hear people tell you that you're, you're too kind. Amen. You're too giving. Amen. That is the empath. Amen. Feeling what others feel. And sometimes if we're not careful and don't ask God for wisdom, we take on those emotions of other. I remember there's one scripture that a lot of people use, Jesus wept, amen? And when we look at why he took on the emotion, right, of what was going on, Lazarus had died, amen? So when you are the, when you have the gift of mercy, you are very forgiven. You are probably very emotional, amen? Because you're feeling what others feel. You want to help. The gift of mercy here in my um, John Maxwell Bible says to empathize with, cheer, and show compassion to those who hurt. Amen. That is the gift of mercy. So if you notice yourself, you know, probably all of your life, right, showing that forgiveness for others, and you see people hurting and you're bringing that on, you're empathizing with them. Amen. 
And so just continue to stay in the word of God. Amen. Continue to stay close to your leaders. And if you have questions about what your gifts are, amen, talk to pastor, amen, talk to leaders, amen, talk to a friend, talk to someone that you see operating in their gift, amen. And so you've all heard both men and women on the line that you can go to and talk about their passion. How did they know that that was a gift? Amen. And here in the middle is some of the ways that you know they will benefit you in your own personal life by making you healthier and more effective for serving others. They will benefit the entire church. Amen. Everybody don't have the gift of cleaning. Yes, everybody can pick up something. Amen. But everybody don't have the gift to make everything sparkle. Amen. And so we want to make sure we do what we can. Amen. But we operate in the gifts that God gave us for the edification of the body of Christ. Amen. And they will help you know God's will for your life. That is the most important. Amen. So we've had amazing conversation about the gifts. Um, And so first, I want to take a poll of those of you online. How many of you know at least one of the spiritual gifts that you have? Yeah, go ahead and type in the chat. Type I do in the chat if you know or I don't if you don't. Amen. How many of you know at least one of the spiritual gifts? Amen. The Burnett's do. Sister Jefferson do. How many of us know? We have 31 devices online. All right. Missionary Smith knows. I knows. Pastor put it in the chat. um, First Corinthians, the gift of helps. I didn't know what the gift of helps meant. Amen. I didn't know that the gift of mercy was a gift until I was studying for this lesson. Amen. And I went around trying to understand what that meant. Amen. I am an empath. Amen. And I know that in corporate world, that's what that looks like. All right. So we know, you know, what our gifts are. Amen. And for those of you that didn't type that, you know, um, and you want to find out, this is a great lesson. If you don't print out any other lesson, this is that lesson. Don't you want to edify the body of Christ? Don't you want to help others that are around you in the body of Christ? And I'm not just talking about within the walls of Solid Rock. Absolutely, that's your home church. You do want to edify the body of Christ that is in Solid Rock, but you want to be able to do so in your daily life. You want to be able to do so in your household, amen, with your family, with your spouse, your children, if you're not married, your sisters, your brothers, amen. You want to be able to do that, amen. So suggestions to discover and develop your God-ordained gifts. The first one there is pray. If we want to use the chat or unmute, amen. Suggestion to those who may not know what their gifts are to discover and develop. So prayer is one. What's another one? So we're right here. We're giving your brothers and sisters in Christ suggestions. Amen. Study God's word. Absolutely, pastor. Study God's word. How about not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together? Being around like-minded individuals will surely help you. Amen. The Burnets. Yes. Yeah. Uh, oh, fasting. Fasting. Oh. I, I just want to agree with you <laughs> on not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together. Because so many times we don't realize that we have the gift of presence. presence. It's like when I'm not there, people will say, well, I missed you. I didn't see you over there shouting and, and jumping and clapping and stuff. And and I miss mm-hmm. other people when they're not at church. So, so the gift of presence is, 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 is something that we all have a gift in, and we all can take part in. And if we all show up on Friday night, it's going to be an encouragement to our pastor and our first lady. So we know we all have the gift of presence and and we need to exercise that gift. Amen, this whole weekend, amen. Amen, absolutely. How about speaking to your pastor, speaking to your first lady, amen, speaking to your leaders, amen. Leaders are the brokers of gifts. Pastor ever asked you to do something, he was like, I don't know if I could do that. 
but you end up doing it really well. Amen. Am I just talking about myself? Amen. Surrounding yourself with positive people. Amen. Remaining under a covering. Absolutely. Fasting and prayer. Amen. I absolutely, I'm going to hang on to this. Amen. This was a good Bible study for me. Amen. Leaders are brokers of gifts. I had no idea what the gift of helps was when I got to Solid Rock. I didn't know. It was a mother that was praying over me that told me. Amen. I Develop and deploy my spiritual gifts. Amen. I hear somebody unmuting. Does someone have a comment? Amen. Um, so Matthew 25, 14 through 30. Amen. How would God view me if I did not discover, develop, and de Deploy my spiritual gifts. Can someone get Matthew 25? We just want to look at this. Amen. I know we may not have time to go through it all. Amen. But I want to make sure we can use that as homework. Amen. How would God view me? This is something, when I say homework, amen, this is something you can chew on all week long. Amen. Even if you know a gift that you have, but you begin to listen in this Bible study and hear others talk about gifts that you feel that you have. I would say, get yourself a good study Bible. Amen. There's a, a site called BibleStudyTools.com that have different versions of the Bible and look up spiritual gifts. Amen. And it will help you um, understand that. Amen. So here we go and um, with just a couple minutes left, suppose everyone in our church decides to discover, develop, and deploy his or her spiritual gifts. What would happen? Amen. I know we have some answers here, but each member will know his or her spiritual job description. All members will be able to work together in love and harmony, effectiveness, thus avoiding pride, envy, and false humility. Amen. Sometimes we have to be careful with our gifts because we can become arrogant in them. And, and y'all go ahead and go over um, what Paul is. He talk about the thorn and he asked God to remove it. Amen. You start to begin to research that scripture. You know, God keeps things that are there to humble us. Amen. So that we stay humble, amen, so that we know as we started out in the beginning of this, amen, that all of this is for the glory and honor of God. It is not about you. The sooner you begin to understand that, how you glorify God, how you just re help God reveal his glory, amen, that is so absolutely critical with spiritual gifts, amen. They are not for sale, amen. They are not for sale. Y'all going to do some Bible study. I heard a preacher say, who bewitched you to believe that you could buy this Holy Ghost? Amen. There's so much Bible study in here. Um, and there's a lot of scriptures for you to study on, to chew on, to feast on. Amen. What questions do you have? Amen. You have pastor on the line, first ladies on the line. We have some elders and some missionaries on the line. What questions are burning? What do you, what questions do you have about discovering your spiritual gifts? We now have 33 devices online. Amen. Are y'all understanding that that well? Any questions, the Burnett's? Yeah, I had a question about Matthew 25, um, 14 through 20. But and when it was talking about the talents and how one, how two of those developed the talents, the other one did nothing with it. 
but the Lord and eventually took that talent away from him. So the talents are talking about gifts. Is that what I, I, I'm to understand? That's my question. Okay, that's a very good question. Amen. Um, Pastor, did you want to tackle that one or do you want me? Go ahead. You can say something, but I, I will come. Okay. So when we look at um, this parable of those with the talents, um, understand that all of it belonged to God. All of it belonged. To, it was all God's. Amen. It's um, all of these, the gifts, amen, or all of the fruits that God give you, they all belong to him first. And so what God is doing is entrusting you and trusting all of these men that he gave or families that he gave these talents to, to then give the tithe back to him. Amen. And in this parable, the one that had the most talents, if you think about it, I want to try to make it life application. The 1% of this country, those millionaires don't pay taxes at all. But then you see those of us lower class and middle class always having to pay more of the brunt of taxes on it. Amen. If just looking at that, I I want you to kind of see what's happening and what's still happening now is that God will give us much, but if he can't trust you with five, why would he give you 10? Amen. If he can't trust you with a thousand dollars, why would he give you a million? And so this parable is kind of making a, um, parables are those um, stories that Jesus gives to help us understand what that looks like. And these were gifts. These were gifts or talents that God gave these people to use for the edification of Christ, like we just read. And one of them decided to hide them, amen, and not give God back a portion of what he had given to them to glorify his name. Sir? Well, when you consider this, it, Jesus here is talking about lost things. He talks about the he talks about the the oil and the virgins and all of those things. And, but talent obviously was a was a um, a currency of some sort. And so he says to them, but this is an, analogous to us using whatever God has placed in our care. So that's currency. Glory to God, your finance, your, your gift, your skills, your ability, your whatever God has placed into your, your hands. In this case, um, he's talking about one got five and one got two and one got one. The one who got five did all he was supposed to do and, and got 10. And the one who got two did what he was supposed to do. He, he was faithful with it. He used it in accordance with what was right. And he doubled what he had. And the one who got one was jealous of the fact that the others had more than him planted it in the ground and didn't do anything with it. And many folks with their gifts their abilities, their finances, they plant them in the ground. They don't do what God called them to do. And sometimes that's because their feelings were hurt the last time they tried to do it. And mm -hmm. somebody who, glory to God, did not appreciate the efforts that that individual uh, gave uh, maybe said something to hurt their feelings. So they just said, forget it. I'm not doing anything. Well, the Lord is saying, Listen, I have placed this in your care. And whether people around you don't appreciate it or not, I appreciate you doing what you did. And you might not know whom you've impressed or blessed by what you did. So this, this, this is analogous. It talks about uh, talents or a means of currency at that point. But that really speaks to whatever it is that God has placed uh, on your plate to carry out. He's given to you to do. Uh, and so that's what it really is about. Uh, Deacon Burnett, hopefully that explains that. Amen. Amen. What other questions do you have? Amen. I love, you know, reading that story. I, I like reading it because it just, it humbles us or it humbles me, right? I'll speak to myself. And when God gives you gifts, amen, it's him that first gave them to you. So to not use them to edify the body of Christ, to not use them for the purpose in which he had given it, uh, it just makes my heart hurt, right? You see people with tremendous talents and they'd be more willing to use them, you know, outside of the body so people can see them, even if they didn't get any money for it, than they would for the edification of the body of Christ. Amen. So we want to be careful to ask God's wisdom 
amen, to continue to pray over the gifts that God has given us and to continue to pray for developing them and continuing to use them just because you know what your gift is now doesn't mean that you're using it to the capacity in which God has given you. So to that measure of faith, check your measure of faith. Amen. And that is my time, sir. I will hand it back over to you. Amen. Come on, everybody. Clap your hands. Put some hands up. This was a fantastic Bible study. And uh, hopefully it's challenging in some way to everybody. It's encouraging to, to everybody. Thank you all for putting those hands and hearts up. That's wonderful. Uh, because this was important. And understand in that particular scripture, which we just talked about, the Bible says that, that uh, the master gave them uh, the, the talents according to their several abilities. That word several means individual. Glory to God. And so he gave it to them based on their individual abilities. And so that means that when uh, the master came back and the guy who had won and didn't do anything with it, he took that talent and he didn't give it to the guy that had did two because he did a great job too with what he had, but he gave it to the individuals who had the individual who had five. And he gave him that talent because he had, he knew the ability, he knew that uh, the, the word, the work that that man could provide, glory to God, what he could do. And so he gave it to him based on his ability. God will bless each of us with what he has given to us. But many, but many times we're looking at others and what they're doing and uh, not appreciating what God has given for you to do. It might not be as glamorous. It might not be out front. Glory to God. Yours might be in the background, but it is no less important to the uh, edification and the building up of the body of Christ. Amen. Glory to God. It is important for us. And all of us have gift. Every one of us has gift or gifts. Every one of us. And he has given to us something to do. And so what we want to do is uh, pray and seek God's word and speak with pastor and glory to God, trying to where God, where is it that you want me to be? What is it that you call me to do? What is my gift? What am I going to do? I was talking with one of the saints Glory to God. And they share with me and very, I mean, they were very clear. God has given me to do this in the youth department working with. And that, that was so, it was so, they were so, uh, they were so convinced of it. They were so sure about it that I'm sure about that. That's what God called them to do. because They were so sure about it. And so all of us need to understand, God, what is it? I want to know what God calls me to do. Encouraging one another. And now uh, I said this earlier, but let me repeat this. And that is, is that sometimes God will anoint you for a specific season to carry out a task. Whether that's your gift or not, he anoints you, he appoints you and empowers you for that particular season, that particular assignment to carry out that task. That doesn't mean God might use you to, to give a word of prophecy. That doesn't mean you're a prophet. But at that time, you needed to be the one. And God knew that you were subject, subject to him and that you would do exactly what he wanted you to do. You were the one. Glory to God. And so you do that and you are so so appreciative of what God used you to do. Amen. That doesn't mean that you go out and tell everybody, put, uh, you know, profit on your business card next week. Glory to God. But it does say that you are now, you are showing yourself to be subject to the will of God. Now you need to be filled with the Holy Ghost. Glory to God. This, this is Holy Ghost power. Glory to God. You've got to be filled with the Holy Ghost. Glory to God. And you're not going to be filled with the Holy Ghost if you don't spend some time in the presence of God seeking more of him. Can I talk to somebody tonight? Glory to God. You need to spend some time in God's word and in prayer because you're not going to get the Holy Ghost from Netflix. I, I'm just saying. Glory to God. You need to spend some time. You're not going to get the, you're not going to be filled with the Holy Ghost. Goes glory to God uh, on on Verizon trying to talk about what's going on and what happened and why they didn't do no 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 what you want to do and even when you see something that that doesn't quite go the way you wanted to go seek God so that you might be able to be an intercessor you might be uh, who was that talked about the glue somebody I think that was missionary Smith talked about the sealant glory to God the glue that you might bring to that are separate and bring them together, you can be used by God to be the one that helps to bring things together, that helps to lift things up, that helps to shine a light in a place where, or maybe explain something a little better than somebody else. That's the Holy Ghost working through you. 
to unify the body of Christ, the ecclesia, the called out assembly, glory to God. And not just, not just solid rock, but that's the called out assembly. That's the church. Or am I talking to somebody? That, and that church has no denomination. It has no title, glory to God. It, it, you know, it's a, the, the, the St. Paul Baptist, missionary Baptist, Church of God in Christ, apostolic, AME, glory. It's what it's the non denominational It's God's people. It's that called out uh, group. And uh, we want to be used by God. Amen. How many, know, raise your hand. I just want to say, how many want to be used by God? How, how many are willing to surrender? Look like I ought to see some more hands. Glory to God. Who wants to surrender to God? Use me, Lord, in your service. Whatever it is you call me to do, God, I want to be used. Glory to God. Holy Ghost, have your way in me. Cause me to say, cause me to not say. Cause me to do, God, use my hands, use my feet, glory to God. Cause me, God, to, to be an encouragement to somebody else, amen? Glory to God. And so that's where we want to be. And that's a tremendous gift, amen, the gift of encouragement. We talked about that that night. Helps, glory to God, discernment, glory to God. And so, uh, and as was talked about earlier, just the ministry of presence, glory to God, the ministry of presence, just being there is an encouragement to somebody. How many you know that's right? Glory to God. Just your presence makes a difference in the life of people. Glory to God. So, amen. I don't know if there's any other questions or comments, but uh, glory to God. It is important for us to know that each one of us has a responsibility to encourage others, to support, to lift, to build, to help somebody else to lift that heavy burden. Glory to God. To just sit there and be a listening ear. It's not always that you have something real deep to say. Sometimes the deepest thing you can say is nothing. The most powerful thing you can say is nothing. Just listen. Because how many know sometimes we, as we begin to talk, God speaks to us and then through us and we answer our own questions. We just needed another person to lend their ear. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. Anybody else have any questions tonight? Thank you so much, Missionary Hunter, for a wonderful Bible study. Uh, amen. We all need to go over. Uh, we'll come back. Amen. Have uh, talk about hospitality next week. But is there any other comments or questions? Any other concerns? Glory to God. Uh, Elder Charlotte Mitchell. Yes, ma'am. Unmute yourself. Oh, okay. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. Um, I'm sorry. I apologize. I came in late, and so I didn't get the first part of the gift of presence. I've never heard of that, so I definitely would like to. The ministry that up of and, presence. The ministry of presence. Ministry of presence. I'm sorry. Where is that found? No, no, no. We're just talking about the, the ministry. The ministry. Not oh, the ministry. We're talking about the ministry. Okay. Your presence. Amen. That's why. Okay. I, that's why I, I clarified that statement. All right. Oh, okay. Okay. Thank you. I want to be. That's. I want to be real clear. There's a, there's a ministry. Glory to God. Just your being there ministers to others. How many know that's right? Amen. Just you being there. Sometimes somebody's got something going on. Glory to God. And you're not on the program. They're not going to let you read the scripture. They're not going to let you do the opening prayer. You're not on the program to sing no song, nothing. You just are there because you're sitting in the seat. It encourages the individuals who are going forth. Amen. Because you're there. You clap your hands. Glory to God. And you and when you consider that ministry, if you sit in the church, glory to God, if you sit in the church, Glory to God. And you just kind of watching what's going on at the pulpit. But if you stop and take a look around real quick, you'll see somebody watching you. Glory to God. You'll mess around and notice somebody noticing you. Amen. Glory to God. You have impact that you're not even aware of. Each one of us do. We have a sphere of influence that we're many times not even aware of. Glory to God. Yeah. Glory to God. So nobody needs to think that they're insignificant. Everybody's important in the kingdom. I wish I was talking to five people. Everybody's important in the kingdom of God. Amen. But, but the other thing is everybody has a gift. Everybody. God has given to every man 
Glory to God, a gift that you can operate in. And all of us work together to build the body of Christ. All right. I um, want to encourage everybody. There's so much going on. I uh, ask you to get your best seed together tonight. We ask everybody that was saw a seed of $10 tonight. Would you do that? Um, and while 